What in a dystopian nightmare world do we live in? Mr. Beast just got 100 people from age 1 to 100. And I've trapped each of them in their very own glass cube. And as usual, people started leaving. Did you want the money? Yeah. Then why did we leave? <laughs> but this time, this game is a lot. Anyway, Mr. Beast gave everyone the option to have a challenge for just spend a day to do nothing. But almost every time, everyone decided that they want to do a challenge at the risk of someone getting kicked out. Or even themselves. But they were all of them deceived. For this wasn't a set of challenges to win $500,000. And the trick began with the first challenge. The game is 3 Cup Monty, but we made it slightly bigger. But the key to this game wasn't exactly picking the right cup, because it moves so slowly that you just had to pay attention to it. Oh my gosh, what's that over there? Not, not, not for them. It should be hard to solve, but not everyone would have the ability to follow this through to the end at full attention. Which means some people will have to rely on other people to confirm their observation. This is where the fun begins. And as expected, people started scheming to get other people pick the wrong cup. Everyone thought they were playing two cup Monty, but in actuality, it was two truths and a lie. And the fallout from this would continue to snowball to the end. And as expected, the next day, the contestant chose to do another challenge instead of sitting it out and let everybody leave. Which is the logical choice, as it speeds up the game and gave everyone something to do. Because sitting around doing nothing all day is boring. Yeah, Which naturally caused more people to leave. And therefore, most people would rather choose the more destructive option to screw everyone else. The results are in! And only nine voted against it. Including themselves. How's it going? It's in your nature to destroy yourselves. And that is to destroy yourself systematically. So everybody's voting for 54? Yes. And so these random collection of people have begun to tribalize and collude to vote out certain members of their society that they deem to be a threat. You guys are sick in the head! Well, that's in this entire boat. The only reason they voted you out is because they were scared. I felt so bad for Ten, I invited him on stage with me to co-host the rest of the challenge. And immediately he began to retaliate and exact his vengeance. Okay, I need every single one of you to vote for 14. <laughs> 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. Um, I don't know how to put this, but uh, almost everyone voted for 14. And of all the dumbest thing they could have done, they voted out 69! Look at what you've done! Dude, you never vote out 69! What the hell's the matter with you? On top of that, he was such a nice grandpa. Gee, I'm good till Christmas. Therefore, it's hardly surprising that they also vote out the nicest grandma to go along with him. I don't understand you people! She's not the biggest threat here! This is heart -wrenching. And once more proving yet again that evil will always triumph. Because good is dumb. And by the next vote, it's clearly obvious that they would pick the challenge again, as opposed to sitting it out and, you know, working together to solve the problem at hand. Why are you gambling? You guys are crazy! And because of that, they now have to play Solitaire Jenga. That is, playing Jenga by yourself. Which would be a simple game to play, because you would be playing to preserve the tower so it does not fall over. Which is the opposite of the regular group Jenga, where you want the tower to fall as fast as you can when your opponent is playing. In Solitaire Jenga, all you have to do is you have to make sure that you only pull the pieces that leave the tower in a very stable manner. Which mostly involves pulling out bricks that are in the middle. That way the remaining blocks will leave the tower in a very stable manner, because pulling the Side block would risk instability. This challenge has eliminated everyone above the age of 60. The right side of the map is a wasteland. Demonstrating the physical and mental intellectual superiority of the millennials and early Gen Z. Which means it's only logical that they unanimously vote to do the challenge. We're doing a challenge. Oh. Mic drop! Mic drop! And Mr. Beast chose the most mentally frustrating game he's ever done. In our Squid Games video, you guys love the marble game. And recall, this video is not about endurance or doing challenges. This is a game about trust and distrust. If there is one thing that would get you short-term gain but screw you over in the long run, it would be deception. So it pays off to be honest. So you see, the marbles here in the marbles game doesn't really matter. Even though they're using the marbles to keep score, and ultimately when someone hits 20 marble, they get to win the game, the marbles itself is not the game that they're playing. And that's the genius of the marble game. It's actually a clean slate. 
when both players are free to determine what game they're going to play and how they're going to get 20 marbles from the other player. And when you're giving a clean slate to make your own rules, it is also implied that you are given the opportunity to set up your own special rules for yourself while you play with the agreed upon rule with the other player. This opened up so much opportunity for honesty and on the flip side, dishonesty to screw over the other player who trusted you or getting screwed by the other player when you do that. Just like what happened in the Squid Game. While the events that unfolded in the TV series was quite emotionally dramatic, the more interesting situation unfolded in the Mr. Beast video. It happened when these two class act decided to play for honors and chance. They both simply played rock, paper, scissor, regardless of how the favor swings from one player to the other. These two class act decided to play for honors and chance. And thus, the goodwill of the two players demonstrated throughout their gameplay ultimately felt so emotionally dramatic when finally one of them ultimately won the whole pile of marbles from the other player. It was rough. And just like before, the final five for sure selected to play a challenge instead of sitting around doing nothing until the game is over. At this point, I seriously wonder why Jimmy decided to include all of this option to do a challenge or doing nothing. Because looking back, the options are all clear. You gotta play the challenge no matter what. But for this round of final five, it gets even weirder because he picked the most boring game possible, which was to bring back all the contestants and have them vote who gets to deserve a spot in the final two. I'm sure a lot of people love this sort of voting game, even though it's boring as heck. There's no gameplay and everything the contestant can do that would influence the outcome was already done. There is no gameplay, skill or otherwise, that could alter the final outcome. This section of bringing back past participants and have them vote out some final contestants, it was part of Survivor TV show tradition for a long time and it's proven to be quite popular. But gameplay wise, they're not doing much anyway. It's all about mind game and there isn't much they can do about the vote that's going to come upon them. So instead of a game, this section is much better referred to as the player having their comeuppance over the means of how they conduct themselves throughout the game so far and what they did to other people, especially number 54. You have no idea what people they give you. I'm sure he does and I'm sure he knows what's coming. At this point, I'm rather glad that I didn't really make any enemies. And Mr. Beast was quite clever too. He put number 54 against a nice old lady who truly deserved to be in the final. I just know. Yeah, you did. You got 37 votes. Which is the highest number of votes for anyone in the final five. Dude seriously deserved to get outvoted, and I can't believe he managed to survive this far. And so it was quite cathartic to see him eliminated. Finally, a nice old lady getting her comeuppance that she deserved and a spot in the final two simply because she's been such a nice human being. But before we go to the final game, Mr. Beast has one little surprise up his sleeve. What is this right here? That's for my, my daughter. Today's her birthday? Yeah. Oh, let's see what comes through the curtains. Oh, to see. And of course, he brought number 40's family over so he can celebrate his daughter's birthday today. And not only that, he also brought number 52's family to celebrate her upcoming demise. I mean, spoiler alert, but you must have seen the full video by now if you're watching this one. And I think this scene shows one thing that I think a lot of people missed about Mr. Beast. He's quite well known for having lavish spending and giving away lots of money. But what makes his video stand out even since the beginning? It wasn't about the giving of the money or the presents or whatever expensive gifts he's handing out. It was that he was able to make people happy. And that's the part that made his video so popular. So I wish more people would have remembered that every time I see another Mr. Beast video in the future. It was never about the money, it was about making people happy. And so obviously the two contestants would have voted to do a challenge for the final game. I wonder what would happen if they just choose to do nothing. What would Jimmy do? But I suppose there is very little chance of that happening because everyone seems like they're just so tired and just want to go home. I mean they spend an entire week inside a plastic cube with nothing to do if not for the intermittent challenges that they choose to take. For the final game it was a winner's takes all. Truth or lie, there's no middle ground or half and half wins where they can split the difference in each take half of their winnings, which makes this a variation of the classic game of non-cooperative game theory. There's an interesting solution to this where a couple of years ago, someone on a game show, Golden Balls, forced the other player to split the money by making sure that he will pick a steal. Therefore, if the other guy also chooses a steal, nobody would get the money. But if the other guy chose to split, he would guarantee that they would split the money half and half out of his stolen winning. This means he was forcing the other player to pick a split or they will get no money at all. And this was all good. So therefore in the Mr. Beast game, because there were no option to split the winning 50-50, the same strategy wouldn't even apply unless you make an agreement that you will split the winning 50-50 between them. But because the two players hadn't thought of that, this game became a game of chance influenced simply by truth or lie. And the best part about the outcome was that the millennial actually told the truth, but grandma didn't believe him. 
This man literally said he had it. Oh my God, what a crazy play. What is wrong with you? He told the truth and he got it. We said all along, good guys can win. So it pays off to be honest. And so it became the second option of the winning play that you can tell the truth and it resulted in the best possible outcome by chance. Subscribe. Later. Also, Feastables is available at every 7-Eleven, Speedway, and Walmart in America. Go buy Feastables right now.